आप फाइल ओपन कर सकते हो ये कर सकते हो डेस्कटॉप में जाके कर सकते हो सब ये रिकॉर्ड शुरू हो गया हां सॉरी सर चालू है रिकॉर्ड हां रिकॉर्ड नो प्रॉब्लम सर वो तो एडिटिंग हो जाएगी आवाज हां एकदम जोर से बोलो एक जोर से एकदम सर uh okay today we will see how we can produce uh, weather graphs so if you have seen a weather graph of any place then uh, uh this is one typical place and uh, in this graph you have the this is a graph for one particular year for the place and as you can see the rainfall the monthly rainfall for each month is shown as a bar graph you see these bars red bars so the monthly rainfall is shown as bars whereas the uh, monthly mean temperature the mean temperature of each and every month that is visible to us as a blue colored line so this is actually a combination of two graphs now the horizontal axis will consist of the names of the months whereas there are two vertical axes the left vertical axis which is also known as the primary vertical axis consists of graduations of rainfall whereas the right vertical axis which is also known as the secondary vertical axis consists of graduations of temperature in degree celsius now this graph is created using some data so this data is right here in this table as you can see this table is where the data is so for example january the mean temperature is 21.24 so here uh, this is 20 and 21.24 so this is the mean temperature for january and uh, similarly the rainfall is 59.1 so here january the rainfall is slightly above 50 so in this graph it shows us 59.1 so similarly you can have the data for all the months for example may again uh, i'll take uh, the example of may 27.47 is the the monthly mean temperature so may uh, the monthly mean temperature is 20 25 and 27 yeah 27.47 whereas the rainfall is 59.7 so in may the rainfall was 59.7 uh yeah one more example i'll take that of september september the mean temperature was 28.08 september the mean temperature slightly lesser than uh, 30 you can see that between 25 and 30 it is 28.08 i'm i'm referring to the blue line over here right so the data of the blue line refers to the monthly mean temperature which is 28.08 for september whereas the rainfall highest in the entire year is 295.7 cm so 295.7 cm is here so this is the rainfall the rainfall has to be in millimeters okay now um, uh, when we actually have data uh the data is not available to us like this for example january no thermometer can measure the monthly mean temperature similarly the rain gauge cannot measure the rainfall for the entire month right so uh this is obviously data which is derived out of some raw data so where is this raw data this raw data is here in a sheet and here this raw data consists of uh three columns or the four columns the first column is the date 1st january 1994 the rainfall is in millimeters 3.8 millimeters was the rainfall on 1st january 1994 the maximum temperature that was measured using the sixes maximum and minimum thermometer the maximum temperature achieved during the day was 25 degrees celsius whereas the minimum temperature achieved during the day was 20.60 degrees celsius so i have this data not just for 1st january but i have this data for the entire year you can see may june july august september october november and december so i have this data about the rainfall for that particular day 
the maximum temperature achieved during the day and the minimum temperature achieved during the day for the entire year and for all days of the year right so in order to get this data what operations need to be done right here you can see that there are two more columns which are in red one is the range of temperature that is the daily range of temperature and the second is the daily mean so i'll use another sheet in which i'll demonstrate how you can calculate these values and from these values you get these values and from these values how do you generate the graph so let's start with a fresh sheet i'll close this one now i have another sheet yeah weather data example so here in this i just have the raw data this raw data is for another particular place and uh, 1st january 1994 Second January, third January. So I have data for all the days. For each day of the year, I have rainfall, maximum temperature, and the minimum temperature. Right. So how do I kind of create the graph? Right. So the first thing that has to be done is, um, although you can choose not to calculate the range, but uh, yes, in your test you will be asked to determine the range. So I put the header as. range and uh, i have put another header as mean now this range is the daily range of temperature and this mean is the daily mean temperature now if you do remember you do remember the daily range of temperature is the difference between the maximum temperature and the minimum temperature right I'll, okay the daily range of temperature is the difference in temperature between the maximum temperature and the minimum temperature right whereas the monthly mean temperature sorry the daily mean temperature the daily mean temperature is the average of the maximum temperature achieved during the day and the minimum temperature achieved during the day so let's see how we can actually calculate these values using excel so to find the daily range of temperature we must find the difference between 25 and 20.6 i think we can do one one more thing and that is use a calculator to calculate these data so 25 minus 20.6 will give you uh, 4.4 so the range of temperature would be 4.4 but you can do that with a calculator maybe for one day two days three days what do you do when you have 365 days in the year and remember you, you don't have to just calculate the range of temperature you also have to calculate the mean temperature so how do we use the power of microsoft excel in order to make sure that our calculations are error free so as i said range of temperature is the average uh, is the difference between the maximum temperature and the minimum temperature so i'll first calculate range so in order to calculate range i'll first go to this cell and then i type this formula in this address bar over here this is a formula bar so in the formula bar i type and every formula must begin with an equal to sign every formula must begin to, uh, with an equal to sign right so i insert the equal to sign and then i say this i just select this cell you can see the border is dashed and it's blinking so the dash border and blinking sign means that that cell has been selected so c2 and i then say minus now that has been selected c2 minus d and then i press enter see how easy it is i calculated the value of the range of temperature using microsoft excel and not a calculator right so the maximum temperature which is c2 and the minimum temperature that is d2 right now similarly i can calculate the mean temperature so i click on this cell and uh, remember the mean temperature of the day is the average of the maximum temperature and the minimum temperature so again i go to the formula bar and uh, as i said earlier every formula must begin with an equal to sign so i first press the equal to sign and then a then a type average a b e r a g e remember there cannot be any spelling mistakes because if there are spelling mistakes then the excel does not recognize Uh, so say for example if i type i mean here you can see that i have typed average which is why 
uh, there is this formula which is appearing a kind of a reference number one number two now if in case I type you know let's say I make a spelling uh, mistake a v r a g and then I do this there's nothing there is a spelling error and a spelling error in Microsoft Excel is also known as a syntax error so there is a syntax error over here I wouldn't want a syntax error so I again go average average now you can do an average of maybe one cell two cells three cells and a number of cells in this case I want the average of just two values the maximum temperature and the minimum temperature so I take the average of both. I select the entire range of cells. So it's just two cells over here. I can select a greater range as well, but my problem will be solved if I select just these two cells. Right? So the range of cells is this one. So average of C2 and this colon sign means C2 from C2 till D2. So from C2 to D2. So this colon sign in the formula bar actually means that it is from and to. Right? So C2 to D2. And then I close the bracket. Remember, closing the bracket is also important because not closing the bracket would mean that there would be a syntax error, right? And then I press enter. Uh, I guess I have made some mistake over here. Yeah, the mistake that I've made is see when I make a mistake like this A V E A R G So I made a mistake and which is why there's an error in my uh, in the, in my final value. So I need to go press backspace again type A V E R A G E right now I have this right. so now I press Enter and I get the values 22.8. Even if you use a calculator, you will get the same values 25 plus 20.6 is equal to 45.6. And if you divide 46 45.6 by 2, which is the average, if you had three values, you would have divided by three. But here we have just two values, so the average of these two values would be the sum of these values divided by two. So 25 plus 20.6 is 45.6. 45.6 divided by 2 will give you 22.8. So that's how I get the value of the uh, range of temperature for 1st January and the mean temperature for 1st January. But what I would want is, and that is where the power of Excel comes in, that what I would want is I would want the range of temperature and the mean temperature for all days of the year. Now this is very very simple because what you can do is just select the range of cells and then just navigate your mouse over the range of cells and go to this corner till a plus sign appears. So when this plus sign appears, double click, look at this. Wow. So when you click on the plus sign, just redo it this once again. I scroll my mouse over this range and I come to the southeast corner or the bottom right corner and uh, I see that a plus sign appears. When, when I see the plus sign, I just double click. When I double click, I get the range of temperature and the mean temperature for all the 365 days in the year. So this is how I do it. Now, in order to make my data more presentable, I can do one more thing and that is, I can select this range of cells. I select this range of cells and create a box, all boxes. Additionally, I can make sure that it is, uh, this is black in color, so I may just uh, get confused between the raw data and the calculated data. So in order to keep the calculated data different from the raw data, I'll color it red. And the way I do it is, I select this 
range of cells and then uh, you see this A over here this A is for the font color so I just press this and I have the font color it's red now I save this keep on saving because you might just lose the data right. now what we would want is the monthly mean temperature and as you know the monthly mean temperature is the average of the mean temperature for all the days in the month additionally what we want is the uh, rainfall data let me just go back to that sheet yeah. in this sheet I had the rainfall maximum temperature minimum temperature range and daily mean was what I calculated but apart from that in another sheet I have and this I, there, there are two sheets there's one sheet of raw data and there's another sheet of year data so I created a sheet of year data and in the year data I have the mean temperature for each of these months and the rainfall for each of these months so how do I create such data how do I obtain such data again there's a bit of calculation required so I have one sheet as raw data now here there is another sheet sheet 2 first of all I right click on sheet 2 and I rename this and I make this year data ok so this is the year data now in order to make my data more presentable I will just make few operations first of all look at this bottom uh, sorry top left cell just click on the cell and the entire sheet will be selected and then I format row height and I make the row height as 20 press enter then I want all the data to be sent middle line in all the cells so middle line over here and middle line vertically also ok again I save now I will take the months in type January and then just as we did in the earlier sheet we scroll our mouse over the cell and then we come to this just drag this you see that the names of the months as I type January the names of the other months appear by themselves so January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August right. now I would want two sets of data one is the rainfall and the other is the mean temperature ok so now Make this bold. And, uh, here, as of now, I do not have any data. So, where do I get this data from? I need data from the uh, rainfall for the entire month of January. So, I need to get it from the raw data. Now, this is slightly taxing because uh, you need to get the uh, rainfall for all the days in the year. So, what I can do using a calculator is I can you know, just keep on adding these values 3.8, 12.3, 18, 0, 7.4 and I get the rainfall for the entire month of January but rather than doing that Excel offers you a powerful way of doing this again using formulas now before you use the formula it is important that your formula the results of your formula are error free so I'll just do a small operation you'll have to repeat this 24 times but that's fine I'll have to um, do a small operation and using this operation I will make sure that my final data my final results are error free so I I, uh, I select this entire range and uh, here I use the data tab and uh, in the data tab I press filter right. now I have these you know, drop down arrows coming on the top row now 
what I can do is I'll first go to the first column that is a date let's scroll my mouse over this little drop down arrow and uh, press it okay so here what I'm actually doing is I'm filtering the data I do not want the data for all the days I just want the data for the days of January so here all these are selected so I deselect all now all of them are blank uh, then I use text filters text filters contains now the month of January will contain these three letters K A N I say OK now what I have is the other data is just hidden. I just have data for January. Don't worry, the data isn't lost. The data is still there. But instead of uh, being able to view the entire year's data, I'm able to view only the data for January. Press on some other cell so that I get deselected. And then I select this range of cells. Now, this range of cells is the trade form. So then I type okay, uh, the name for the range of cells which contain rainfall data for January it could be Chan Rain. So Chan Rain, uh, look at where I'm typing. I'm typing, I first select the cells, I select the entire range of cells, don't forget even one cell particularly the last one, track till 31st January, like the entire range and then look at where my mouse is scrolling, there is a name box so in the name box what you can do is you can provide a name to the range of cells that you selected right, so in the name box I type Chan Ray yeah, so I have Chan Ray right, the moment I select Chan Ray the entire range of cells now this can be a useful feature because uh, you'll have to deal with a lot of data and in order to deal with a lot of data you have to do some multiple operations prior to uh, calculation because otherwise your final calculation may contain errors so I do that with uh, rainfall for January another thing that I would want over here is apart from rainfall I would want the mean temperature so I once again you know, select these cells, the range of cells which contain the mean temperature for all the days in January. So I select this, go to the name bar, then I type this is this uh, range of cells contains the data for all the days of the month of January, the daily mean temperature, right? So I write Jan D. Mean. So Jandy mean you can type whatever name that you want to here you don't have to worry about a syntax error Jandy mean is the name given to this range of cells so the moment I I, I select Jandy mean then the entire range of cells is selected so now I have the rainfall and the uh, mean temperature for January now, in order to do the same thing for February, I once again go to text filters, contains, and then I, instead of January over here, I press, I, I type Feb. Okay. And I have the data for February. So, here's the range of cells for the 28th day of February. And I name this as February. Alright. Similarly, for this for the daily mean for all the days in February. It would be a good uh, idea to you know keep some part of the name for all the range of cells common, and I will tell you in a short while why this is uh, you know very useful. So this is February daily mean. Then I do the same thing for. March. Right. 
now have the data for March. Select the cells which contain data about rainfall. I press so I type bar rain. So you see in all these uh, names the suffix rain is common. Select the Again, in all these names, okay, M A R A D L E A N. So, this is the March G B. Okay, now as you see, as I keep on giving new names, these names get just added over here. I have to do this for all the days, uh, all the months of the year. So contains. Now this may look a bit, uh, you know, time consuming, but this is very essential, you know, if you want to uh, avoid errors because eventually, if there are errors, it is very difficult to find out where, you know, where, where you got the error from. So contains. I have done March now, April. Okay. Now select the range of cells. I just use the first three letters of the month and then rain. Okay. Similarly for this, the first three letters of the month would be R and then D M B A. Okay. Then first April. Okay. This is the data for April. Now I do the swap.
okay so i've done this for all the months of the year and uh, now i deselect the filter when i deselect the filter i have the entire data available to me and uh, there are now data for all the days which are which i can view now if i just press this for scroll bar i mean i, I can see the there are 24 names, 1, 2, 3, 4, and there are 24 names, uh, 2 for each month and uh, the daily mean temperature, D mean is the common thing and AP are the first 3 uh, names, the first 3 letters of the month, so I have April, August, December, don't worry about the order in which they have, because there will be an alphabetical order in which they have, so April, August, December, February, January, July, June, March, May, November, October, and September. Right, so now <coughs> I have some part of my data ready. I save the sheet and now I go to the year data. Now, if you do remember from your meteorology classes, the rainfall for January is the sum of rainfall for all the days in January. So Go to the address bar and I type equals to remember all formulas begin with an equal to and as soon as one indication that you know you doing the right thing is that when you just type before you type equal to you can just see that all of them are visible and are activated but as soon as you type equal to vanishes okay so equal to and the name of this formula is sum s u m right again no syntax error should be there some bracket now here ideally i would have to enter each and every cell but naming the range of cells helps me in this ma uh, this manner so that was what i was referring to when i said the naming the range of cells is easier and uh, uh, it is not prone to errors so instead of typing each and every cell and i uh, uh, i now type the name of the range of cells so because this is the month of january month of january i want rainfall if you do remember the name of the range of cells which contained the data for the rainfall was j a n r a i n right I close the bracket and then press enter and see what happens now i get the total rainfall for the month of january Similarly, now this has been done because I had a name for the range of cells which contains the data for the rainfall. Now for the mean temperature, I do something which is very similar, but there is a difference. The monthly mean temperature is not the sum of the temperatures, but it is the average of the daily mean temperatures. So the average of the daily mean temperatures, which you could what you could ideally do using a calculator is you have these values 22.8, 23.9, 22.25 you would simply add up these values and then divide this by the number of days in the month which is in January 31 so you would ideally add these values using a calculator and then divide the sum by 1 uh, by 31 because in January in February you have to add all the data for February and then divided by 28 but instead of doing that I have an easier way out and that is the formula average remember no spelling mistakes the average of what average of Jan B mean and make sure that your <coughs> name for the range of cells is correct for example, if I just happen to press another A, I can see that there is an error. Instead of that, I press the correct name, close the bracket, and lo and behold, I have the mean temperature for the month of January. Now, this mean temperature is 21.24, and I got this using the formula, and I, if I click on the cell, the formula is C, average Chad B mean. If you look at this, these values, 
the rainfall data con consists of one decimal, while as whereas the mean temperature consists of as many as six to seven decimals. So in order to avoid that, I just select this entire range of cells, and then right click, go to Format Cells, Custom, and see only a 0, 0.00. So I'll just make sure that the data consists of only two decimals. Save this. Now I have this data for January. I can do the same for February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Now there's an easier way to do this as well. Simply select the range of cells and then drag. When you drag, you have data for all the months, but here problem is you get the same data for all the months. And guess what's the reason? The reason is because when I go to the data for February, when I look at the formula, it says some January. Here, sum of Jan D mean, which is similar to what was there in the cells above. So I can change this to February, and I can change this to Feb D mean, right? So again, there's an easier way to do this. Select the two cells, press Ctrl F, you get find and replace, and you replace J A N Jan with F E B Feb. Press replace all. Excel says that it has completed its search and made two replacements. And if you see the values over here, they've automatically changed because the range now that is referring to is the range of cells of February, not January. Okay, so that was the advantage when I had a name such as Febrain in which rain was common in all the uh, uh, names, whereas the three letters of the month was the prefix. So, close. Again, I select this range of cells. Control F. Control F. That is what we press in order to get find and replace. And instead of January, I replace and I get M O R. That's all. Two replacements. Close. Control S. I do that for. I do that for each and every month. I replace Jan now with April J P R. Let's replace all and close. Similarly, May. Control F. Replace Jan with M A Y. Replace all. Okay. Close. June. Control F. Replace Jan with J U and June. Replace all. Okay. Close. July. Control F. Replace Jan with J U and Replace all. Okay. Close. Now what this does is. In the first cell, there was this name Jan Rain. Now, we prefer to use a convention, and that was the first three letters of the um, month. So, what I'm essentially doing is, in each of these, I'm replacing the first three letters by another three letters. So instead of JAM, I'm replacing that with FEM, FEB. So, I'll turn to July, I'll go to August. Control F, right now it contains Jan Rain. I replace Jan with A U T. I replace all. Now, the beauty of this is that I don't have to do this individually for each cell. I can select the range of cells and then wherever there was Jan, it is now replaced with August. Wherever there was J A N, it is now replaced with A U G. September, Control F, replace Jan with S E T. Is all okay? Close. And then October, Control F. Replace that with OCP. Replace all. Okay. Close. November, Control F. Replace that with MOB. Replace all. Okay. Close. December, Control F. Replace that with PDC. Replace all. Okay, close. 
the, the advantage of doing this operation again and again is that you get some practice. So now you have the data for all the days of the year, all the months of the year, and you have the data for rainfall as well as the peak temperature. Let's see. Now our next step, and this is the final step, is the first step was with, in which I found out the range of temperature for a particular day and the mean temperature for a particular day. The next step was getting the mean temperature for each of the months and the rainfall for each of these months. My next step is to produce a graph. So in order to publish a graph, I can select any one cell, I select this one. And then look at these tabs over here. You go to the insert tab and there are quite a number of things that you can insert. I'll just select this charts. You see that there are a number of different types of uh, chart available. I select column. It is immaterial whichever I select, but it is better to select the first one, column. Select column. And then again, within column, I have a, different, a number of different uh, patterns. So I will select the one which is easiest and okay, 2D, 2D column, the one in the left. So here is one box which appears, which is empty. If this box is, box is empty, there is no graph because I haven't yet selected the data. So I click on this box and then select data. So now you can see that this cell is highlighted, but I don't want data from this cell. My data is in these cells. So I select these cells and one of the ways in which you can know that these cells have been selected is that there is a border which has you know, a blinking border which appears to the range of cells that have been selected. Do nothing, I say just okay. Right. I have my graph over here, but this is not the graph that I want. This is not the final graph. If you do, if you refer to the graph that was shown to you previously as a sample, the graph looks like this. So, in order to make our graph look like this, there are a few things that you need to do, and uh, yeah. So there are a few things that we need to do. So let's first close the sheet. Right. So this is uh, there are a few things that we need to do. Um, the rainfall data was on the left axis, while as the temperature data was on the right axis. So in order to make that happen, uh, here the blue bars are for the rainfall, whereas the uh, red bars are for the mean temperature. Now we did not want the uh, mean temperature as a bar. We wanted this as a line. So how do you make it a line? Just select on any one of these red bars. I select one and all of them are selected. Having done that, when I see that all of them have been selected, I go to chart tools and I change the chart type. I change the chart type from column to a line. Press on line, press OK. Now you have this as a line. But again this is not quite similar to the graph that we saw. And uh, the reason is that we just have one axis. We don't have two. So how do we have two axes? So in order to have two axes, again select this line. Right click and then say format data series. Format data series, you have these options, series options, primary axis and secondary axis. So we are choosing this to be as the secondary axis for temperature and I say close. And now I have another axis. Now this axis is the secondary axis, the right axis, which uh, shows the uh, monthly mean temperature. So I can see how the monthly mean temperature varies over the entire year and I can see how much rainfall was there for each of the months. Right? Now still this is not enough because how do I, how, how does one know that this is rainfall and this is uh, the daily mean temperature. So 
I'll have to uh, insert access labels. So in order to insert access labels, I go to yeah, I go to uh, I, the chart tools is still, uh, still uh, selected. In the chart tools, I go to layout, the layout. I go to access titles, access titles. I want a title for the primary vertical axis. I, I just uh, select this primary vertical axis and then the rotated title. The rotated title now is this box, a text box which appears. And you can type it in the text box or you can type it. Okay, I just press double click on the text box and then I type inform. for bracket millimeter it is essential that you write the units the rainfall is in millimeters press enter oh, okay. and you can just click your mouse anywhere else now you have the access title as rainfall millimeter now you have to invert, uh, insert one access over here as well so again I select the chart chart tools layout and in layout I go to access titles Secondary vertical axis, rotated title, then I type temperature. I in the text box, I type temperature. I can just write TEMP and then I write Celsius. Temperature will be Celsius. I press nowhere else and this is done. Right. Now, the graph looks nice, but it is very small. I select the graph and make it large. Right. So, this is what your final graph should look like. And here you can see that there is a rainfall on the primary vertical axis in bars, new bars, whereas the daily uh, the monthly mean temperature is in the form of a line and the values are graduated on the secondary vertical axis, whereas the names of the month are on the primary horizontal axis. You could have a, a secondary horizontal axis as well, but in this case we don't require. That's it. Save this and uh, close this and uh, I will name this as let's say my name is Sanjay. So it is Sanjay triple CA two.